Video editing is good. Dude, dude, sick video. Wow, nice your editing is great. Video editing. Super editing. The whole video was literally. How do you smart. edit your videos? So lately, I've been blown away by all your incredible comments about my editing style. It got me thinking. It's time to take you guys behind the scenes to show y'all what really goes into the making of our videos, an exclusive step-by-step -step breakdown of my editing process. And since y'all are real OGs, I've got a little treat for you. So keep your eyes open and don't skip a beat. But before that, there's a thing y'all must know. I have zero knowledge about editing. Is that some kind of a joke? No, because I've hired an editor for this. Meet Sam, my editor, and he's going to explain to you all those crazy editing techniques that'd be enough to give a boost to your videos. Psst. Yo, bro, I've never talked in front of the camera. Now you will. Okay, okay. If you ask me, editing is very subjective. It doesn't follow one rule. For example, if I add only 10 cuts in the video, it'll decrease the retention rate, and most of you probably skip this before we even begin talking. However, the same doesn't apply to Sam Sullock. His channel is entirely based on sharing raw, unfiltered gym routines, so if he goes south and starts adding multiple cuts and fast-paced edits, he'll probably lose that long-built connection with his audience. But also, that doesn't mean he never edits. He actually cuts off those dead spaces and boring bits to create a comparatively seamless version of his routine. Thus, the foundation of any great editing tutorial begins with one core principle. Edit according to your content. Step 1. Understand the idea. Don't jump straight into editing. Take a moment to get familiar with the script and the flow of the voiceover. Here's how I do it. Before touching any edits, I play the voiceover and listen carefully all the way through. Then I play it again, listening even closer, and if there is any word or part I don't fully catch, I go back to the script to make sure I've got it. Now, the key here is listening to the voiceover at least twice at the start, so my mind fully absorbs the video's message and pacing. And this is where other creative editors might relate. When we're listening, we start visualizing animations and edits even before we get to work. I call this process editing in mind. Like now, with a clear idea of the video in my head and some creative sparks already forming, it's exactly time to dive into the second step. Storyboarding. I know, a step that many of you might take as a total waste of time, but trust me, this will not only give a creative direction to your ideas, but will also help you edit 10 times faster and deliver polished results. Wait, so I have to spend 2 hours on a voiceover, 5 hours on planning, and then another 3 hours editing? I'ma miss my deadline, dude. Listen, my friend, when I storyboard and plan out the animations, I'm able to edit the video smoothly because I know exactly what it will look like and how long each part will take. I mean, no one is a master at nailing a perfect scene on the first try, but if you skip this step, you'll likely get stuck, and that 3 hour edit will turn into double the time or even longer. On top of that, what if you hit a creative block, or spend ages tweaking little things and in the end get so frustrated you'll just need a break, and the whole project will get delayed just as usual? Anyway, now the big question is, how do I storyboard? This is the most creative phase, I love it, it's where you'll plan to give life to those boring texts and sort out your animations and match the pace of the voiceover to make everything as engaging as possible. Here's what I do, I listen to just a small segment of the voiceover, like 10-15 seconds, and brainstorm the best way to bring each moment to life visually. At this point many editors would simply add animations or PNGs that match the audio literally. For example, in my last video, there was this line, back to old school methods. I kept it simple here, with an engaging text animation about old methods, unlike some others taking the conventional route. <laughs> wink wink. Now take another example. What if the script goes like, I felt completely stuck with no hope to move forward, but in the end, I found my way. Like, what would be your initial thoughts? A man in prison? Nah, someone at crossroads? Still not quite right. What if... A maze! That's it, a maze! I felt completely stuck with no hope to move forward, but in the end, I found my way. And see how seamlessly the whole frame blends in with the text? So that's what we call a creative challenge. To question your imagination, explore visuals that add meaning, and then go for what resonates best. Now that we have mapped out the blueprint in our heads, it's finally showtime. Step 3. Editing. But just before that, I've got a surprise for you. I'm giving you free access to my editing pack. Yep, you heard that right, free access. 
But remember, having the assets alone won't make your edits look professional. You gotta follow the steps I shared. And you know what? I'm not stopping there. I'll even show you how to use everything in my pack step by step. So keep watching because I can reveal the details at any point in this video. All right, back to editing. Let's start with the basics. My go-to editing software, Premiere Pro and After Effects. Sure, they're popular in the editing world, but what makes the difference is how you use them. Adding your unique touch and creativity is what really brings the visuals to life. Each frame is carefully mapped out, and I'm going to pick two to animate just for you. I'll go with this one right here. Now, let's bring it to life. And for that, dive into Premiere Pro. First, create a new project and give it a name. Then start by setting up a new sequence, adjusting the resolution to 1080 to 1920. To create a rectangular shape like this, select the rectangle tool. In the program monitor, click and drag to draw your rectangle, then resize and position it where you want it on the screen. Next, select the rectangle layer and open the essential graphics panel. Adjust the roundness as you like, then unstick the fill option. Tick stroke instead and set the stroke thickness to your preference. For the stroke color, I'm using Linear Gradient, by the way, to give it a unique touch. And that's it, our shape is ready. Another thing that would create a high-definition visual impact on your video is adding keyframe animation to your still canvas. And no need to stress about setting up the animation manually, I got you covered with a preset ready to go. Just import my editing preset and choose your favorite effect, and here I'm using a slide-up animation, simply drag and drop it onto the rectangle. To increase visual retention, grab the text glow effect, drag it over and drop it in. And there you have it, a fully animated glowing rectangle. After animating this first frame, let's keep things rolling. Next, you'll see the three white rectangles fading in and sliding down to the bottom of the screen. I started by creating these rectangles and now it's time to animate them. This part requires a bit of manual work, but don't worry, just drag and drop the realistic motion blur effect from my preset and you're good to go. Alright, our animation is complete. Notice how after the goldmine frame, the stroke color shifts to blue and the previously blurred text becomes clear? Now let's recreate this effect together. First, nest these three layers and open the nested sequence. Then cut the layers to match the timing of the voiceover. Make sure the two layers slightly overlap. Next, adjust the color on the right side of the layer and apply a fade in and fade out effect on the left side. Then add that pixelated blur effect to the text, head over to the effects panel, search for mosaic blur, and drag it onto both layers. Then go to the essential graphics panel, place the mosaic blur effect below the shape of one layer, and position the text layer below the mosaic blur effect. Now, head over to the effects control panel, select the right layer, and click the stopwatch next to both horizontal blocks and vertical blocks to create the first keyframe. Set the value to 100, then move 20 frames forward and adjust the value to 4000. Here, you can see the red colored rectangle sliding up and the screen zooms in into the first blue rectangle. Let's create this effect. First, go to the main sequence and apply the slide out up animation to the red rectangle's layer. After that, open nested sequence 01 and add the step 1 text to match the voiceover. Next, nest both layers together and add a keyframe to zoom in on the screen. Ah, now our first frame is perfectly animated, conveying the scene just right. Take a look at how it turned out. Viral video, I'll firstly split my video into three general categories. A gold mine, roadmap, alchemist's touch. Step one, find the gold mine. Pretty cool, uh, but wait, there is one more frame I'm going to re-edit for you. Check this out, Mr. Beast's thumbnail appears when the voiceover says creativity, and the entire thumbnail gets highlighted in white. Then, when the voiceover says provocative, only Mr. Beast is highlighted, and when the voiceover says excited, the bear gets highlighted. You'll also notice the thumbnail flowing with a cool curved effect I created. Now let's break down how to recreate this clip. So first, you will want to import your picture or thumbnail into Premiere Pro. Then duplicate the thumbnail layer three times and cut each layer to match the timing of the voiceover. Right click on the first layer in Premiere Pro and select replace with After Effects composition to open it in After Effects. In After Effects, double click the layer then use the Roto Brush tool to select the thumbnail and freeze the frame. Next, apply the four color gradient effect and change all colors to white. Now head back to Premiere Pro and apply a fade in and fade out effect to the layer. And repeat the same for the other layers. Next, add a rectangle shape below the thumbnail layer. 
then match its color to the thumbnail's background using the Essential Graphics panel, and finally apply the flowing effect from my preset. Search for Lens Distortion, and in the Effects Control panel, set the curvature to minus 14. And voila, you've just nailed the same edit I did. You're all set to go. And now one more thing. Slow I... down, mate. Leave some content for the next video. Okay, here's the QR code for the pack, and if this video gets 1000 likes, I'll make a second part with even crazier editing tutorials, I promise. Until then, take care, yo. Peace.